So on a major chapter coming up, I'm going to break down the whole time frame of when I first got knowledge of self and what I had to go through to learn those lessons. You understand? And become those lessons. I'm going to break it all down. But in order for me to do that, I have to tell a story of Camp Gabriel. So boom. Basically, around 1995, right? Finally, I'm like 18 years old. Y'all happy? I'm not 17. I'm like 18 now. You heard? They pack me up. They tell me I'm going to this spot called Camp Gabriel. So I'm like... Yes, this is right before I go to the board. Matter of fact, this was like maybe eight months before I saw my first board. So I had like two years and four months in or something like that, right? So I probably was like 19 or maybe about to be 19, right? So I'm like, yeah, I'm going to a camp. This is a rap. They're going to let me go home. You know what I mean? Because in a camp, you got a way better high up. You got a way higher possibility of making a parole board because in a camp, it's a minimum classification jail. Therefore, people that are there are people that are just about to go home. What I didn't know was, now that Pataki was in office, Pataki wasn't feeling the whole, the whole concept of minimum security jails started to fade away. The minimum started turning into mediums because it was too many violent offenders being incarcerated. Now, it used to be a war on drugs. Now, it was a war on violent offenders. 93, 94, 95. It was a war on violent, violent crime and violent offenders. So now, the, now the state was becoming packed. A lot of drug, um, drug crime dudes who just two, three years ago was getting a thousand years for crack. Now, they were slipping out the door. And anything with a violent crime or anything like that was getting hit at the board, give, giving mad time and all of that. So now the whole state was filling up with violent offenders. All of this is political science. Like, people say, oh, you made your decision, you made your choice in life. But really, those choices were made based on circumstance. You understand what I'm saying? And that circumstance came from laws and policies and things that were enforced. So basically... Violent crimes was filling up the penitentiary. And now it was so many um, violent offenders, a lot of those minimums, they didn't have too much of a use. You understand? So they started housing medium security prisoners. Like at one time, you wouldn't go to a medium if you had eight or nine years left to your board. But now they were sending dudes to mediums with eight or nine years left to the board. It used to be you had to, you know, three, four years, five years to your board max. But now they sending dudes with 10, nine, eight years to their board. And, and, and when you got that much, and when you got that much time left to do, you not chilling, you understand what I'm saying? So they was making mistakes by doing that. So Camp Gabriel, like I said, I'm thinking I'm going to a minimum classification um, classification jail that's gonna be cool and lenient and let me go and shit like that but what I did not know was that Camp Gabriel was getting filled up with a bunch of violent offenders and a bunch of dudes who still had you know three or four years left to their board but they was violent offenders you understand so the jail was not used to housing these type of people the jail was used to housing um, dudes that's going home in a year that got a light drug case or something light. You feel what I'm saying? They wasn't used to housing violent criminals like that. I'm in Brooklyn, by the way. You heard? They're like, yeah, so boom. They wasn't used to housing them violent offenders. So now they sent me to Camp Gabriel. I'm hyped. I'm like, yes. I'm, a, I'm about to go home, bro. I'm going to go to this board, my first board after my first three years. And these dudes going to cut me loose. They know what it is. You feel me? So they shit me to Gabriel. I pop up to Camp Gabriel. And this jail is literally in the middle of the damn woods. It's like they cut out a section of the woods. You heard? It's like they cut out a section of the woods. 
and just put a jail in the middle of it. So ain't nobody from the city even trying to think about escaping because if you run out the jail, you in the middle of the woods. So good luck. You feel what I'm saying? So the jail is bogged out because the jail got some dorms, like some like regular dorms that look like standard medium security type of dorms. And then they got like buildings. Like I told you Oneida had, like a whole building field type vibe, right? So the first place they sent me to was a spot called 18 building, right? Building 18. It's noisy on Atlantic Avenue, man. I gotta go on the back block, you heard? Can't hear nothing on Atlantic. I thought because it was Sunday, it'd be a little bit quiet and all that. So yeah, man, so boom. So boom, they sent me to this building, building 18, right? Know what I mean, so I come in the building, I'm chilling. I'm still a young ass dude, you heard? I come into the building, they sent me to a, I think it was a six or eight man room. Some double bunks, some regular beds. I got lucky and caught a regular bed, you heard? So, you know, I get in there, I put my property down, you know what I mean? At the time, I was reading this book called Down These Mean Streets by P. Reed Thomas, one of the greatest books ever written. If you never read that book, you really need to read it, especially if you're a Puerto Rican dude. You heard? So I was reading this book, right? Chilling. I'm chilling. You know what I mean? I'm just getting into the jail. I'm seeing what's popping. I'm chopping it up with a couple of dudes here and there. You know what I mean? I let dudes know where I'm from. You know what I mean? Dudes know I'm from the Ville, so dudes tell me, they like, yo. So somebody was like, oh, you from Brownsville? He was like, yeah, there's a few of y'all in here. He said, yo, matter of fact, there's a kid in this dorm that's from Brownsville. You heard? I'm like, oh, word? For the sake of the story, we'll just call him you, right? So boom. So he like, yeah, man, you was in here. He from, he from the Ville, you heard? So eventually you pops up in my room. Son of smooth ass nigga. He guard body. And he from the Ville. So son like, yo, what up, son? You from the Ville? So I'm like, yeah, I'm from Howard. He like, oh word, I'm from Van Dyke. What's up? You know what I mean? So me and son start piling. Son the smoothest nigga in the world. Son move like some move straight militant. And son is a um a godly. And son carry itself real godly. You know what I mean? Cause son is G-O-D. You heard? Son, stupid brolic too on the low he just don't even people don't even be knowing like son be had son used to be having the baggy greens on you won't even know until it's too late son was a professional bodybuilder in the streets so son whole shit was crazy cut up on the next level i'm talking about next level professional bodybuilding type status son shit was crazy you feel me but you wouldn't know if you ain't know so boom I'm pollying with son already. I'm pollying with son. You know what I mean? Like I said, son's smooth. He said, yo, come across the hall to the two-man room, you heard? We in the two-man room, the peoples. Come on, son, you peoples. You feel me? So I'm like, all right, bet. All right, I got I to gotta get off noisy-ass Atlantic Avenue, so I'm coming up on Carlton right now, man. I'm about to make this right and get off Atlantic Avenue because I thought because it was Sunday, I might be able to get away with this, but... It's just too, it's just too noisy. Shout out to the terms, bro. One of the best, one of the best, um, one of the best hood series in the game, Brooklyn hood series in the game, the terms, you heard? Shout out to the bros series filled in Atlantic terminals you heard if you never watched it go watch it it's called the terms fire Brooklyn shit I'm like yo I'm like you see they got me in a camp I'm already meeting laid-back smooth individuals that's just chilling you feel what I'm saying I'm like this is gonna be a cakewalk baby now I mean it's gonna be a nice little jail I'm gonna mind my business see my board and go home you heard <laughs> yeah. this is this is what I was thinking not knowing we go, we, we go across the hall to the to the two-man room across the hall. Now Camp Gabriel, 
in the buildings is nothing but rooms. In the dorms, it's double bunks, bunk beds, stuff like that. So people don't be wanting to go to the dorms. Everybody be wanting to stay in the buildings where it's sweet. You feel me? The two-man room was super exclusive. It's just you and another dude in there, big-ass room. Y'all got closets, windows. Like, it was sweet, sweet. Boom, we come in the two-man room, you heard? I come in the two-man room. It's another cat that son be with. For the sake of the show, we are gonna call him Lee. We'll just call him Lee. His son is from Harlem. He like in the 40s in Harlem or something like that. You know, it's different in Harlem. Like Harlem is known for getting money, but them dudes that be in the, in the 40s, 40th and 41st and 39th and all of that, them dudes be a little different. Like in the penitentiary, they always be on some other, they always be on some other type of vibes, you heard? Now I mean, the kid Lee from Harlem is up in there. We go up in there. Now I mean, you was like, yo, yo son, this my man Lee, you heard? You from Harlem, this the peoples, this team. Like dudes is just straight treating me like straight family and team soon as I come through the door. These is Brownsville vibes, you heard? Soon as I come through the door, I'm getting that type of love. Boom, after I got introduced, after I got introduced to son, to son from Harlem, I look, and there's some other dude laying on the bed. You heard? So I'm like, and son is laying on his stomach, and son looking like he roughed up. I see some blood and some swollen faces and things of that nature. So I'm like, who's that? So the nigga you, he like, who this right here? And he walks over to the kid that's laying on the bed. He like, who this right here? And he just punch that nigga in his face crazy. Bang! Bang! This nigga right here, he a rat. And he on punishment right now. But fuck him. Let's go with you, son. What jail you just came from? Nigga just started nigga just started making regular conversation like he ain't have a nigga held hostage in the room just getting smashed out anytime a nigga felt like smashing him out niggas made this nigga real talk niggas called the count niggas called the count and made this nigga go to his room and hide from the police his his lumps and bleeding and bruises and then after the count was clear that nigga had to come back to the two-man room and lay in that bed until given further orders you heard niggas was holding this nigga hostage my nigga police ain't know what was going on all the police in the jail is old ass white men that are retired. It's only like three or four young police in the entire jail. This used to be a minimum camp. Now they're housing violent criminals from violent hoods in the city and they don't know what they're doing. You heard? They have no idea what they're getting themselves into. Now I'm like, I thought this was a camp. I thought this was a minimum. This is the first time I saw a nigga being held hostage in any jail I ever was in. This is deep. So boom. The nigga you starts putting me on to the to the particulars of the jail. He like, look, son. It ain't too many of us in here from the Ville. But I'm putting together a team. Nigga said right now, the whole jail is being ran by Long Island niggas. He heard the Muslims run the jail, but the imam of the Muslim, the leader of the Muslims, is a nigga from Long Island. And this nigga is like Saddam Hussein. You heard? This nigga is like Saddam Hussein of the jail Muslim world. He like, yo, listen. The Muslims ran it, but all of the Muslims was from Long Island, mostly. It was a handful of Muslims that wasn't from Long Island, and one of them was from Brooklyn, and he was on our team, you heard? So he was basically a liaison between the teams. So boom, 
The son starts breaking it down to me. He like, yo, look. The Muslims run the jail, but most of them is from Long Island. And then the other niggas from Long Island that's not Muslim, they in cahoots with the Long Island Muslim niggas. So basically, Long Island is running the whole spot and them niggas is extorting everything. The barbershop, commissary, anything coming in from outside clearance, drugs, them niggas got their hand in everything. The Muslims. And this nigga who's running the Muslims, he's a fucking mastermind. You hear me? He's a mastermind and he's a master influencer. And anything he says, these niggas will do. If he tell these niggas to kill police in this fucking jail, the niggas will kill police. Remember, I'm mad young. These niggas is older than me. All of this shit is pretty new to me. But the nigga you was like, listen, I'm not gonna be in this jail while Long Island niggas is running this shit and, and basically oppressing this shit. Like, I'm telling you, Long Island niggas had this jail so under siege that you had to be careful how you talk to a Long Island nigga because if you get in the beef with one of them, they was like 50 deep. You heard? Long Island niggas like Bill Blass. And it was, this was a long time ago, almost 30 years ago, man. So, I mean, I forget certain names, but, uh, AJ, if I can remember correctly, from Roosevelt. Correct me if I'm wrong. But all type of very well-known niggas from Long Island was in the jail. And basically, they had that shit under siege, you heard? But you was new in the jail. And you wasn't trying to hear being in that jail. And he not running shit, you heard? He just couldn't sit still. It was like these Muslim niggas and these Long Island niggas think they the only niggas with an extortion game. He said, I'm about to put it down. You heard? Yeah, I was in that two-man room, sitting there with some super goons, holding a nigga hostage in the room, beating his face in because he ratted about something. And this is supposed to be a minimum security jail or a camp. But this was no camp, baby. This was different. This was Camp Gabriel. And some of the stuff I seen in this jail, I ain't seen nowhere else in the world. You know what I mean? So y'all stay tuned. This is a real situation. You heard? Damn. Coming to the stage, we got uh, what's his name? Tom Guess. Thank you. Skiz, you a dog, I'm a grown man. Stolen hands, you can keep the corn, I'm strong. Got my own land. This is fast talk. Hit you with the map. This is fast talk. Know my roots are every black door. No bad school. Okay, coming to the stage. It's our favorite. T. y'all check that gem pop podcast you heard check that we going into further details about some of the stuff in the stories that i may have left out and forgot about i'm in there with my bro mark ward you heard we be talking spicy you heard make sure you tune in because we be talking real spicy and that's a fact I play Rolex game, made back cut off the brain In the courtroom like fuck a D8 and fuck a Red Red I bought a big face Cartier, put my watch on the rocks I was turned up broad day, we was going to wall with the swatch My brothers drove my cars off the lot, lot I pray to God the narcos don't wrap up my spot Got a bow by the dock, trying to make a transaction Got a whole lot of guap, spent the weeks around rap Last 
My son Rob De Niro got 10 in that federal pen We gon' get it again Lend me a listen We was boys in prison And we came home grown To bang that chrome Home not the same A whole lot of gang Some grow in the game And some won't change Lane too crowded I rerouted Came out dirt I sprouted It's how it yeah, I've been dripped too long in that 6 3 gone. My wrist a storm. Shit, we born the trap and none of us lack. In fact, I play Rolex game. Maybach cut off the brain. In the courtroom, like fuck a D8 and fuck a Red Red. I bought a big face Cartier, put my watch on the rocks. I was turned up broad day, we was going to wall with the swat. My brothers drove my cars off the lot. lot. I pray to God the narcos don't wrap up my spat. Got a bow by the dock, tryna make a transaction. Got a whole lot of guap, spent the weeks of ran rap. Uh, court cases, dudes mean mugging, looking at my wrist, Rolex faces. We can't stand in the same places. Y'all been really basic, I'm not even gon' lie. I'm loving all you haters. All that bad energy motivated me to come off them project staircases. Feds tapping phones, just tracing. Just got the call, they ran in my man's basement. Street games ain't nothing to play with. Back and forth the court, waiting on that bail shit. The whole fam's, yeah, they hella sick. They found a couple bricks. Even now it's all crazy with this COVID shit. Time to reroute, focus it. I play Rolex game. Made back cut off the brain. In the courtroom, like fuck a D8 and fuck a Red Red. I bought a big face Cartier, put my watch on the rocks. I was turned up broad day, we was going to wall with the swatch. My brothers drove my cars off the lot, lot. I pray to God the narcos don't wrap up my spot. Got a bow by the dock, trying to make a transaction. Got a whole lot of guap, spent the weeks of ran rap.